Christopher Tate is currently the most viral person in the world. More people are searching for him than Kim Kardashian, the NHL, Joe Biden, and the entire country of Romania, which is where That's he currently insane. resides. He gained over 2 million followers in the past few weeks, and that doesn't even represent how much dominance he's had over all of social media in the past few months. Why? Well, every Fucking couple of insane. years, social media gets introduced to- That's why I get annoyed with people being like, bro, I can't believe you platformed this man. Bro, he got 2 million followers on Instagram over the course of like a couple months. The f do you mean I'm platforming him? He's platforming me, motherfucker. What are you talking about? A new self-proclaimed alpha male, red pill finance expert who flaunts his lifestyle and work ethic, who is idolized by a community of other males online. But Andrew is not just a typical phony that's pretending to be something he's not for a little bit of YouTube views and Instagram followers. He really is a multimillionaire. He really is a kickboxing world champion, but he's also accused of being a money laundering Romanian mafia ally who runs a global huh. sex trafficking business while selling his make money fast course dubbed- Tate has not been back on Twitch since I dumpstered him, which is weird by the way. I wonder why he stopped. To Hustlers University to his millions of followers. Most videos covering Tate just focused on the surface level stuff he says for views. If my chick said I want to do OnlyFans, I'm like, all right, then cool, go do it. How much you made? 10 grand, all right, give me eight. All right, cool. All right. Why would, what woman is gonna give you eight? Grand. Cause she's it's my you're my woman. You're doing OnlyFans. You're selling my product. The your products. Yes, the correct. Not, not Next question. Position. No. That's the world we live in now. Females are entitled and fucking lazy. Another thing I learned is that women are only loyal to the dick they're sucking. He says these shocking and bewildering ideals to get a rise out of people. Those reactions, whether they're good or bad, lead to more views and obviously fame and followers. A strategy as old as time. I know exactly what I'm talking about. All of the, time. the funniest part about this is the never ending phenomena of people saying like you say crazy shit to fucking get scrutinized and then get a lot of followers like that is a business model right and I am no stranger to getting emotional and sometimes fucking saying things that maybe I could have worded a little bit better. Right. The difference, however, is that when I say that, yeah, sure, I get a little bit of a, I, I get a little bit of a boost in audience once I'm done being fucking canceled. Whereas if you're saying things that are reactionary in nature, that cancellation rarely ever fucking comes unless you're like straight up a Nazi, in which case it'll come. But like three years down the line, four years down the line after you've made a lot of money. That's the main difference. The only time Greek God X got any meaningful amount of social movement in the past like three years or the past two years since he had a fucking heel turn to become like way more mask off reactionary was when he said the brave thing he said the other day. There are only two genders. He got like 10,000 likes on that. How are you going to sit here and be like, oh man, it's such a fucking crazy thing. Oh man, people are just like attacking me for being edgy. It's like, no, you get a lot of clout for doing that. But I want to go deeper. Where does this behavior come from? Why does he have all these shocking allegations against him? Let's take a look at the dark side side of Andrew Tate. Andrew's father, Emery Tate, was described by his peers as somewhat of a superhero. He was a staff sergeant in the U.S. Air Force. He was fluent in Russian, Spanish, German, and English, a martial artist as well. But most notably, he was a chess international master who had many victories over grandmasters. A grandmaster is the highest level you can achieve as a chess player. To this day, the chess world is confused why he was never officially a GM when he met all of the qualifications. Emery was a trailblazer and inspiration for black chess players around the world. Unfortunately, chess doesn't pay the bills. Emery was- From what I understand, he was kind of a dickhead though, in his personal life as a father, for the record. I was raised by probably the best father on earth. I really genuinely but believe But he wasn't that. around? It, it, but a father doesn't have to be around. And it's more about quality as opposed to quantity of time. I saw my dad once a month. He was out on the streets. He's pimping, hustling. When he came home, it was an impactful time. Whether it was a positive impact or a big argument or whatever, never was I ever around my father. It was a low energy environment. But if you're home all the time, you're gonna lose to a degree your mystery. The way that Andrew Tate describes his father makes him seem like a gigantic dickhead. He was poor. He competed in tournaments and pickup games in the park for money to get to his next location or next meal. He raised his three children to think like him. Think of life like a chess match. Every move is calculated, knowing what won, two or even 10 moves will come after that. Emery was nomadic, multicultural, and free. He encouraged his children to be the same way. Andrew grew up in Gary, Indiana, notoriously one of the worst places in America. He took a liking to chess. At age five, he was an Indiana state champion. At six years old, he was playing against three 10-year-olds. 
and winning. Then at age 11, his parents got divorced, and his mother moved him and the kids to Luton, England. This is where he would grow up. Living with his mother meant that he no longer had a chess coach. He no longer spent three to four hours a day with his dad learning strategy. All he had was his younger brother, Tristan which altered his life path immensely. What evidence do you have that Andrew Tate's father was a dickhead? Andrew Tate, like, look up Andrew Tate's father, and if you see any fucking TikTok or any sort of video where he's, like, describing his dad, like, I saw one because my entire fucking feed is cluttered with Andrew Tate shit. Um, I watched one where it was, like, he was talking about how his dad came over to, to visit them one time, and, like, his mom had gotten, the, gotten him a haircut. The first time I've seen my dad in a year, he gets in the house, he's in the house for about five minutes, and my mom's like, yeah, I took him for a haircut, Emery, but I didn't didn't like the way they cut their hair and my dad's like well and then i'm like yeah i don't like how they've cut it da, da, da. and my dad went f nuts my dad went you're raising my f***ing boys talking about how their hair looks they're 10 years old you got them looking in the mirror like girls talk about their hair what's wrong with you woman you're gonna my boy's up and he lost his temper big. I'm up all scared and said, Tell Emery, it's the first time I've seen you in a year. This is why we couldn't be together anymore. You're crazy. You're crazy. He called the police and told my dad to leave the house because my dad's saying, Look, you can't raise my boys. You're going to raise them bitches that I lost his temper. He messages my mom and says, Look, I want to see my boys. I don't want to come to the house. I don't want to see you, bitch. I want to see my sons. So my mom puts us in a taxi to go over to his hotel. We go to his hotel and he takes me and he marches me down to the hairdresser and he says, Son, I'm going to shave all your hair off. And I'm only 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why? Why? He's like, when you grow up and you become a man, you'll realize that nobody gives a shit about the kind of hair you have. They care about the kind of man you are. They care about your qualities as a man. Haircut is probably the least important thing. Only low quality men are going to judge themselves on a fucking haircut. So he sat me down in this chair. They start shaving my head. And because I'm only 10, I started crying, right? I don't know if the kids at school might make fun of me, whatever. I don't know. I'm 10, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm human. I'm a child. I start crying. He emailed me at the time and he said, look, when you grow up, you're going to understand that I'm not going to have my sons raising a paradigm where they're concerned about their haircut that is detrimental for your your mindset as yeah. a man i'm a i'm six foot three kickboxing world champion multi-millionaire top g i'm here yeah, on the yeah. internet saying all these things i'm teaching me who gives a f about my hair anyone who's going to be concerned about my haircut is missing the, the broader message so that doesn't bother me so okay. it's 7 30 i'm gonna go to bed i'm gonna be up at 10 10 30 i'm gonna go and get haircut i don't feel like driving so wait oh. i'll a be haircut Haircut, bro. Nigga, haircut, nigga. There's hair there, and it has to go. I need to be more bald. You think those little bits are gonna make a fucking difference? You think a girl's gonna walk down the road and go, I'd fuck him, but there's an extra millimeter on the left side of his hair. Maybe I want, like, on what planet are you? You think that makes any fucking noticeable difference? No matter where you go, there's always people that are just like hyper reactionary, especially when it comes to gender shit. And immediately their defense is, oh, you're a pussy. You're a soy boy. You're, you must be gay. If you think that like uh, caring about like your child's hair is exclusively a female trait. You know what I mean? It's like so many, so many dudes respond to that. Go, yeah, that's great. Actually, that's that's normal. He picked up fighting around age 15, which became his new passion. In his International Sport Kickboxing Association career, he lost his first two fights, then went on a four consecutive win streak before getting a title shot against Paul Randall in 2009. He won the Cruiserweight Championship in this bout, then he defeated Daniel Hughes for the IKF Cruiserweight title. But before social media dominated our world, someone like Andrew had to resort to more classic media like radio and TV to get his name out there and promote fights. Around 2009, he explored the world of reality TV. Huh. The Ultimate Traveler was the first show Andrew appeared on. The concept was six amateur backpackers competing for $12,000 by trying to navigate Indonesian challenges with no knowledge of the country. On this show, it was clear Andrew was the same guy he is now, just not a millionaire. Me and her have completely opposite trade-offs, and she wants the executive class and, and you know, and a nice hotel, etc. And she expects me to front that with my tra Traveler of the Week money, but I'm not going to. Chloe's really broke, and she keeps dropping hints, but it doesn't matter how many hints she drops, I'm not going to spend money on this I want to. His brother Tristan, who had a very similar life path, was on Shipwrecked, an island survival reality show. The two became go-tos in Europe reality TV for producers that needed tenacious and cocky young men. He got a shot at the ISKA World Light Heavyweight title on a three-day notice against Frenchman Jean Benoit. He lost. However, his team submitted a video of the fight and demanded a rematch in which he was granted and won the second time by knockout in the eighth round, making him world champion for the very first time. This is Andrew Tate. I am the ISKA Kickboxing World. Andrew Tate's the only six foot four dude I I've ever encountered that has like the most manly energy. Champion. The ISKA world's most amazing person. You gotta but wonder where that insecurity is coming from. You know what I mean? Funny, tall, muscly. 
By the time he was 27, he had multiple world titles and successfully defended them. He had a number of different fights in different leagues all around the world, such as Infusion Live, IKF, and ISKA. This is a world title, and this means that I am the best kickboxer in the world. Now, because I'm so f cool, I actually have two world titles at two different weights. So while you're best in the world at nothing, you're not even the best in your town at anything, I'm the best in the world twice. Andrew knew he was losing the love for fighting, but he was clearly worried that his life would spiral out of control if he didn't have enough money to keep him from being bored. If I had enough money to constantly entertain myself, unless I'm a billionaire, I need something that keeps me focused and keeps me occupied in life. It was time to build his empire. In 2015, he quit fighting to solely focus on making money. He sat down with his brother Tristan and said, how can we get rich? They spent countless hours on YouTube, researching the Federal Reserve, banking institutions, inflation, investing, and how money <laughs> works. One day while scrolling through the internet- And then they what, arrived at being a digital pimp? Like, what do you mean? You didn't have to do all that to fucking figure that out. You know what I mean? On ad, talk to live girls now, which brought him to a live stream where you can communicate with a real woman. He immediately realized the opportunity of creating a webcam business because he conveniently had six girlfriends in different countries. The girls would do their thing on camera, chat with the men. They had a keyboard that was unplugged, but Andrew would sit behind the computer off camera and talk to the men in the live chat, pretending to be the girls, and they would do things or say things in exchange for money. He said he was generating around $3,000 per day. At his peak, he had 75 women working for him at four different locations. However, this was a huge mistake, according to him. 75 women worked for me at the peak of it all. But that was a mistake because when you have a bunch of girls working for you like that, the only way you can motivate them is with money. When I started, the girls worked for me because they loved me. Bro, that is, you're literally describing grooming, dude. That's like, you know how people fucking get mad at me because they say like, Hassan, you're not understanding. You're failing to comprehend that like sex work is in, in like exceptionally exploitative as an industry and all this shit. Like, no, this, th he's doing it. Hey, Swerfs. He's doing the thing that you get mad at me for. Here I am, Swerves, recognizing that that is fucking immoral, okay? That is fucked up. That's wrong. To all the psychotic Swerves in my fucking replies, in my QRTs, this is the guy, not me. This, okay? I defend consensual sex work. I defend best business practices for consensual sex work. The ones that make sure that people that want to do this can do it in a safe manner. Okay. Holy fuck. Wait, so Tate was chatting up dudes, Lamau. Uh, Gnome Chomsky, uh, the likelihood that you are talking to a random dude in India every time think you are talking to a OnlyFans girl that is living in Arizona or whatever is 130%. Do you think that girls on OnlyFans, especially at the highest level, are directly talking to you? Do you think they're actually typing to you? Of course not. That's not how that works, man. And by the way, those services are also exceptionally exploitative usually as well like a lot of those modeling those modeling services are really 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 fucked up downsizing to just eight women four of which were his girlfriends and four were his brother tristan's girlfriends was when they all worked together to make the most money they ever had since they were all motivated and in his words in love with him they were able to generate four hundred thousand dollars per month with his online cam business bro they would fucking dude i'm gonna be honest with you i i have friends that do only fans right i've seen the messages Okay, there is no fucking way that they should even respond to those messages. You would go crazy. You would literally lose your fucking mind. The shit that dudes say to these women because they think there is a transactional fucking, you know, objectifying uh, purpose between the, the client and the provider. Oh my lord, dude. You go crazy. There's no fucking way. You, I think your tech, your sex work take is strange because you portray yourself as some sort of giga chad. Fornicates women all the time, especially during the top of the hour. Bra Fuck you! So the girls who loved me and worked Sank, for me, cool. Thank you for the 10 tier one. They get probably around 20% of their money. I'd keep 80% of the money they made. That's so fucked up. Okay, here's another thing I'm gonna say. Sex uh, work exclusionary radical feminists will catch the smoke in this one. You are part of the reason for why people like Andrew Tate can get away with this shit because no one advocates for sex workers rights so people can openly fucking state that they're digital pimps that are grooming their fucking workers that unironically are taking 80% of their fucking income and no one cares why because no one advocates for them they think that what they're doing is like not valuable they think that what they're doing is like morally de degenerate it's so bad some people immediately look at this and think well he's a pimp 
insinuating that these women are afraid of him and he's forcing them into doing work that they don't want to do. People have this idea that, oh, you're a pimp. You just get these girls, you say work and they're scared of you and they just work. It's bullshit. I was doing this in London. A girl could have walked out the door any day. Called the police on me. Yeah, by the way, he acts like what? Like modern pimps on the street don't exclusively use physical intimidation to subjugate their sex workers, for the record. They don't just do that. They literally do what Andrew Tate is describing, for the record. They do that. They do what he's saying, which is they bring them in with love and affection and groom them. Any day. And they didn't. They wanted to be with me because they genuine, genuinely understood that their life was better if they obeyed me. Olivia. Jesus Christ, I was the second man she ever f***ed in her whole life, man. It, it hurt her at every moment that I was doing it, but it felt good for me, so who gives a shit? But when you read what he wrote on his website, it insinuates that his girlfriends were coerced into working for him and maybe didn't leave because of fear. I've had over 75 girls work for me, and my business model is different than 99% of webcam studio owners. Over 50% of my employees were actually my girlfriend at the time, and none were in the adult entertainment industry before they met me. Dog, that literally is not like, like if you think that that's a good thing, when you hear what he's describing there and you're like, oh man, he's such a fucking legend. Deleted that by the way? Yeah, he probably later recognized how fucking gross that shit is. If you think that that's like actually cool or good, like y you got a lot of fucking growing to do, okay? The next moment in the video talks about alleged DV, so we will be skipping over viewing the footage. I've never seen, I've never seen that one. I've seen some of the videos. One of the girls in the video for the record is actually someone who is, the only video that I saw was of the blonde girl. And there's another video that he, uh, there's another video that Andrew Tate posted of the same blonde girl where like that seemed like consensual BDSM. Some of these on the other hand do not look like consensual BDSM. But once again, it is hard to figure that out just by videos like this. But we also do know that in his background, he has been, he's very vocal about being abusive in general. You know what I mean? So it would not shock me if these were not consensual BDSM moments, but instead straight up acts of, of brutal uh, domestic abuse and violence. Slowly but surely, Twitter became his new vehicle to stay relevant and the cam business was making him rich. The next major business move for the Tate brothers was cryptocurrency. So I was buying Bitcoin when they were $3,000 with my webcam. Money. tens of thousands of dollars of bitcoin my net worth would be half of what it is if i'd never invested in cryptocurrency but at the time I of course they did bro of course they did of course they fucking jumped over to the other they just know they know their audience they know they can fucking farm dummies all day every day with like vitriolic rhetoric and all those dummies and then sell them the dream that they're gonna make a lot of money and then hit them with the fucking rug pulls and then move from one classic grift to the next no that's not andrew tate with hair that's andrew tate's brother they didn't buy into crypto because they were savvy investors they insinuated that the business people they were dealing with preferred to use an untraceable and encrypted payment method Spending tens of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin led them to getting filthy rich, kind of by accident. The girls used to drink, and this one girl drank too much wine. She threw up everywhere. I told her to clean up. She started giving me some attitude. So I took all her sh threw out the window. Got her two arms, took her ass, put her outside my door. The girl demanded that he pay her the 1,000 euros that she was owed, and he didn't. Then three months later, at 5 o'clock in the morning, the English police raided his house. They took $100,000 worth of electronics, computers, cameras, and phones, and opened an investigation on him. <laughs> Apparently, the woman just said that he hit her, and that prompted this raid. Door comes off the hinges, boom, police bust in, yeah. fully armored <laughs> helmet. However, Every single yeah, it's pretty funny that he was accidentally arrested for wage theft. It's like Al Capone getting popped on tax evasion. You know what I mean? It's like all the other shit is, you know, he was just getting by and openly fucking openly doing it and being like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it the best. I'm grooming them. I'm grooming them. But then like the thing that is like I'm sex trafficking is great. And then like the reason why he got fucking owned is wage theft. You know, you're just feeding him clout. Dude, it is physically impossible for me feed this motherfucker more clout than he has okay this is addressing someone who already has the maximum amount of fucking clout so that people who are aware of him at the very least understand how he made his money and and what kind of a dude he is okay jesus fucking christ dude he did not hit her and that she was lying the woman even admitted to lying about the situation, but it still took him two years and $450,000 in legal fees for the case to close and for him to not be charged with any crimes. This situation prompted his move to Romania, which was the ideal place for him to live for a few different reasons. He said, well, in Romania, if she doesn't have 
proof of physical, if she doesn't have physical evidence, then there's there's no progression. If she can't say, here's a red mark or here's a, here's where I, here's where he hurt me, there's no case. Mm-hmm. And it's word on word. And I said, that makes a lot more sense. So Romania is absolutely corrupt, but it's a corruption that everyone can participate in. I would much rather live in a country that's corrupt where I get stopped for speeding and I give them a little bit of money than a country that's corrupt like America, which says it isn't corrupt. You have to be a billionaire and have a private jet and go to islands to get away with it. I look at the, I say this exact same shit as Andrew Tate does, but like my argument is, yeah, Romania is corrupt. Pakistan is corrupt, but so is America. And we should stop that corruption. This motherfucker was like, America's corrupt, just like Romania is. So I'm going to go to Romania because it's cheaper to be the corrupt bad guy in Romania. Like, what the fuck? It's wild, dude. It is literally, my entire point is literally that like, we look and orientalize Eastern nations. And we say, oh my God, in Pakistan, they do bribery. In India, they do bribery. That's fucked up. That's so corrupt. In America, we have codified that bribery in the form of corporate lobbying. This, for me, is an anti-corruption take. For me, I'm using this as an opportunity to describe to you that I don't like corruption, whether you have legalized it or not. But he looks at that and goes, no, it's like actually cheaper to be corrupt there. So like, I don't have to be fucking Bill Gates to, you know, have my own little serfdom in Romania. I can just be Andrew Tate. However, he bought a bunch of land out there and now cultivates tobacco, which he intends on producing his own cigars. He also owns 10% of the RXF, which is basically like the Romanian UFC. Some of the fights, he and his brother Tristan do the English commentary. I never dreamed I'd have that name called out at a fight. What? If he's consistent, if nothing else, I have to give him that? Bro, he's consistently bad. Like, there's a... Dude, what is wrong? I think internet debates have broken the minds of so many young men, especially. That they think, like, consistency means good. No, you can be, like, a consistently bad person, okay? People be like, well, you know... Hitler, for all of his wrongdoings, was at least consistent about his evil. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no principles, just moral consistency, even if it's in immoral. <laughs> Around 2017, Andrew decided to ramp up his social media presence, <sighs> taking to YouTube and Twitter to start sharing his thoughts on the world. The very first video, Andrew Tate on gun control. My name's Andrew Tate. I'm the most knowledgeable human in the world. That very first sentence set the tone for his YouTube career. He started posting vlogs to showcase his lifestyle. Fast cars, women, traveling all over the world. But more notably, he started posting these short videos where he quickly speaks his mind on a variety of random topics. Why real men don't cry, alcohol, top five reasons you should never own a cat. I wonder why he uh, chose the reactionary avenue to further his grift. I wonder why grifters like Andrew Tate, which are very clearly grifters, right? I wonder why they don't, uh, you know, become socialists. I thought it was such a wonderful target rich audience of, of being a socialist grifter. And yet for some reason, all these grifter motherfuckers are always hyper right wing. How does that happen? I really thought it was super simple. If you ask all my fucking haters, the easiest thing is to be a, a leftist grifter. But why? Why is it that there are uh, none of those guys? Just me. I'm the only leftist grifter. I'm a vegetarian and I don't eat gluten. Okay. What is, have you achieved anything else in your life? Do you have any actual personality? Are you anything or are you just a person who doesn't eat meat and doesn't eat bread? And I hate when I tell people my story, my turbulent story, like, well, you know that air travel is the safest form of travel. Don't come at me with statistics, motherfucker. I know statistics. I do not like. No, he doesn't. We know. Wait, wait, oh, he's been doing the anti-stat thing for a while, turns out. <laughs> That's a classic. That's consistent. Uh, he's just current day Dan Bilzerian, just switch out military with MMA, etc. No, I think he has, the difference between him and Dan Bilzerian is that uh, I do think that he actually has like some level, like there was a human being in there at some point. And he did actually achieve certain things at a certain point in his life, uh, whether it be kickboxing or, or anything else. Whereas Dan Bilzerian was like literally pumped up by his incredibly uh, wealthy father from the jump. Like Dan is Dan is all fluff. You know what I mean? Some child is outside enjoying their life, playing with toys and smiling in the sunshine and having fun. I hate happiness. I hate happy children. His over abrasive delivery. I mean, that's like, he's like that's like half memes. What he's saying here makes you wonder if he's just joking or not. These YouTube videos were designed to drive traffic to his website, tateshinkai.net, where he sold a course on how to get girls, a course on how to get in shape, a course on chess, a course on body language. What's interesting is that Andrew didn't talk much about women and relationships too much in the beginning of his YouTube career. Sure, he had a video here and there about his views, but most of his videos were focused on money, success, and the mindset to get there. However, 
These types of videos typically are associated with the YouTube pickup artist, the ladies man. As time went on, Andrew's followers requested that he give advice on women, male and female roles, and how he's able to have success with women. Girls run their mouth. I start beating the f*** out of them, not even having sex. They love it more than ever. They like it more. The less sex you have with them, the better. I have nothing to talk to women about besides either sleeping with them or the... Wait. Yeah, that's it. Men are trying to get laid, so they pretend to be friends with the girl, hoping that one day she'll get drunk enough and let them f*** her. Obviously, his bold statements and opinions ruffled feathers. It was the type of content that attracted a lot of anti-women incels. But a lot of his fans- Dude, it is the most, like, it, it is the easiest way to fucking skyrocket into superstardom, especially in an increasingly alienated society where there are no positive fucking masculine leaders in any fucking space, in any meaningful capacity. All these dudes are so fucking rudderless, dude. They are rudderless ships, okay? And they're looking for a guy to, like, confirm their preconceived biases that they have, that they've built over basically a fucking decade of neglect and also entitlement, just this selfish desire and anger too that comes from not having society meet the expectations that they thought that they would reach. It's so fucking easy, man. It is so easy to just like literally be like, fuck women, women are bad, women are bad. My dad thinks you're a positive role model. I think I'm a positive role model. See, but then there's also this side too, positive and masculine are pol polar opposites. No, dude, that is so fucking stupid. Like, what, what are you talking about? Positive and masculine or polar opposites? Like, when you say dumb shit like that, you're literally pushing aside people. No, you can. You can be fucking masculine and like a, a, a normal, positive human being. It's just so, it's just so silly. Literally so much harder to look outside of yourself. So like, why, when you can be mad and blame it on women? Yeah, I know. No, I do. I do try to do that. I do try to do that for the record. I do try to be a positive uh, role model that is masculine. See the truth in his statements, despite his bold delivery. He started getting more attention from YouTubers like Mr. GG and Leon Lush, making commentary videos about him. Comedian Tom Segura and his wife Christina P would react to his videos very often on their podcast, with their reactions getting hundreds of thousands of views. However, that only helped him grow more. The War Room Yeah, launches. this is what popped him off, for the record. Like, he didn't even have his own fucking personal accounts in, at the time. But that's what popped him off. Like, these people fucking platformed it as like a... Not even as like a lol cow or anything. And there's a difference between like looking at his videos and being like, lol, this guy's so funny, haha. -ha. And what I did, which was try to arrive at like... Uh, or try to fucking mitigate the damage. You know what I mean? The War Room is a global network in which exemplars of individualism work from socially induced incarceration. Bob? In 2019, it only cost $500 to get in. Today, Jesus it costs $5,000 to get in. So who could possibly be in the network that would make this much money? Well, there's author Bobby Dino and Iggy, master of spells and shadows. The War Room in Miami looked like some powerful congregations. It's pretty unclear as to what they actually do. Making money is easy. You just take it from somebody. The biggest and most notable business he is associated with are the 15 casinos he opened up in Romania. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, his casinos closed down just three months after they opened. The first thing is I own some casinos in Romania. Three brothers, mafia guys, they own 400 casinos throughout Eastern Europe. I came up to him and said, look, I want to do a franchise with you. They said, we're not interested in franchises. We have enough money. We just open them ourselves. We turn over 10 million euros a day. Why do I need your franchise? Eventually, I came up with a plan. And I said, look, how about this? I'll open up your locations directly next to your biggest competitor. Worst case, the location doesn't pay any money, but at least it takes money from your competitor. I'll give you a percentage of turnover, so even if it doesn't make profit, you make money. I'll take all the financial risk. I'm not sure what casinos they are, but just by a quick Google search, it seems like a ton are still closed in Romania. So he's been paying rent, and they haven't been open for potentially two- Okay, that's sus as fuck, bro. That's like, no, that is incredibly sus, dude. The only way that that's a business is if you are, is if that is a business for uh, people to funnel, bonder, if you will, uh, ill-gotten gains that uh, you don't want taxed or you don't want the government to know, sure. allegedly. So Andrew needed a way to come up with a new cash flow method. Hustlers University 2.0 was born. This was a no-nonsense crash course on how to Essentially, get rich. Essentially, that's a mattress store? Yeah, exactly. In Hustlers University 2.0, we teach about fast money. 
I don't teach you how to save more money in a stagnant pool because that's the way you're listening. What's wild to me is that like most people that do shit like this wouldn't have such a public facing figure. I think his narcissism will will actually or his narcissism routinely puts him uh, gets him in trouble. If I were to predict the downfall of Andrew Tate, I would say that his own narcissistic desires to personally put himself at the forefront of all of these ill-gotten gains is going to end up uh, harming him in the process. He's hiding in very he's hiding in plain sight is very evident. No, 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 no. I, I don't see this being like uh smart. That's that's crazy. Bro, if I if I openly were you know talking about owning 45 fucking casinos and have openly talked about, you know, I work with the Romanian mafia and shit on camera, I would hope that I, you wouldn't be working with the Romanian mafia and saying that at the same time. You know what I mean? We help people get multiple passports and multiple residencies, and multiple bank accounts, because I believe your number one priority as the world reopens should be getting as many passports and residencies as possible because slavery is absolutely coming to the world. The university costs $50 per month and will teach you 18 modern wealth creation methods to get rich quick. These methods are so that you can escape the matrix. So any form of oppression no longer applies to me. I can't be canceled. My finances are secure. I've escaped. Bro, this has existed throughout time, right? Like these get rich quick schemes and like these cons by con men have existed throughout time and it will continue to exist. But as capitalism arrives at its like latest uh, dystopian figure and people start recognizing the inherent contradictions, but don't have a way to adequately communicate their anger and don't realize who the real villains are and don't recognize the terms of their own oppression, a lot of this kind of shit is going to pop the fuck off inevitably of course you're mad you're working in a fucking dead-end job you're working for someone else you're getting fucked all day every day and then someone tells you you are getting fucked every day uh but you can escape it okay how can you escape it not by organizing your workplace not by fucking making meaningful gains that will uh leave a, a better future for the generation after you that you might not even see the uh, reap the rewards of but by literally fucking scamming as well everyone's scamming and you should scam too and that is how you become profoundly wealthy, really. I mean, it, it totally makes sense. It totally fucking makes sense. You can escape it. Just give me $50 and you can escape it. And not many will, obviously. Not many are going to escape it. Maybe one person will. And then all of a sudden, now you have someone that you can point to. Be like, this guy escaped it. So can you. Yeah, most people know they're getting fucked. They just don't know by who. Yeah. Andrew Tate absolutely understands how bad capitalist exploitation is. He unironically has a kind of dialectical materialist outlook on this stuff. But he, instead of inspiring the built socialism, he's like, nah, let me be the top G exploiter. Well, he's using that as a people like Tony Robbins and people like Deepak Chopra. They understand the human condition very well. They understand the systems of oppression very well. That's why they're incredibly adequate speakers and incredibly adequate con men. I think he gets that too. He understands the the, the structures of oppression, the structures of, of exploitation. Basically, he uses that as an opportunity to to improve his own uh, to improve his own bank account pretty much in order to effectively promote this business he needed to take to social media andrew realized producing his own content was too limiting he needed to collaborate with people who already had followings and platforms he shows up talks shit entertains people and promotes his course so he does a media tour some key podcasts that helped him were the fresh and fit podcast who are known in what is called the manosphere which is a group of content creators who have very strong opinions on men and women gender roles they typically admire and praise the traditional way of male and female dynamics another one that helped him a lot was your mom's house with tom segura where tom was genuinely laughing at tate's jokes and genuinely agreeing with his ideals tom praised his comedy which is a huge cosign from a professional stand-up comedian you're so rich but you're smart and you're actually very intelligent and i know you'd get really bored of a like a robot and i'm sitting there thinking bitch i wish to god you're a robot <laughs> You better <laughs> shut the f up. We talk about star signs. Like oh yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> Tell me more about by Sagittarius rising. So I've I've had this argument with a feminist before. She's like, oh well, we we've never tried matriarchies. We've only tried patriarchies. Blah blah blah. And I said, listen, bitch. <laughs> Some people thought this they was were clowning on him for years, but then they like do this and then they come across buddy, buddy. And if it's not a contentious, if it's not a contentious experience, then you're basically saying to your audience that like you kind of agree with what he's doing or at the very least saying that like his ideas are at most laughable and not like dangerous you know what i mean in december 2021 he had 6000 students paying him $50 per month on hustlers university $300,000 per month that's not bad today he has 110,000 students paying $50 per month that is 5.5 million dollars per month 66 
$5 million per year. He said his brother makes about $300,000 per month on his OnlyFans management business. His 15 casinos have a ton of overhead costs. On top of being closed for two years, they would have to be in the heart of Las Vegas to pull anywhere near $1 million per month. His online course is more than likely his most successful business he has ever built. This course was all built on the idea of getting rich like him, and he was rich before, but $300,000 per month and $5 million per month are way different levels. Now he is filthy rich. So am I suggesting he made millions of podcast appearances? Well, not exactly, but he did make a very key change in his approach that changed everything. He instructed the members of the war room to blow him up on social media. This is how. He went on as many podcasts and talk shows as he possibly could. While he was there, he performed. He told his members to clip as many segments as they could, edit them up a little. He basically does the Hasanabi industrial complex, but basically he does that to promote his uh, multi-level marketing scheme. That's it. A little bit. Make an Andrew Tate page on TikTok, YouTube, or whatever social media, and post the clips as if it was him posting. The clips constantly went viral because of how polarizing he is. Yeah. Andrew has an official YouTube and official Instagram not even a Twitter anymore. Some students have TikTok accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers from simply clipping his podcast appearances. In their bio of their pages, they will have an affiliate link to the Hustlers University. There it is, bingo. Of course, if someone signs up through their link, they get 10% of the first month signup fee, which is $5. So thousands of students are reposting his content, getting hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of views, absolutely flooding every algorithm on every social media with videos of him, making okay. him insanely famous. Then when they get that attention, they use it to promote his course in which they make $5 one time and he makes $45, then $50 a month every month after. Literally all these people are grinding for him for maybe a $5 sign up. And if nobody signs up, Andrew still benefits because his fame and relevance is skyrocketing. And like for I the record, that is how multi-level marketing works, right? You have to put upfront money to be able to get other people to sign up for it. And that upfront cash that you're posting, it's 25 not five yeah it's not 10 percent. it's 50 percent apparently but basically the uh, upfront capital that you're putting forward is the main driver of revenue in that situation and that's what the business is that's what the business actually is all about and for the record it is exactly like elon musk's uh, uh rise to fame as well except elon musk also has a product obviously but elon musk has been able to get a lot of people to purchase fucking stock prices of tesla so now they also have financial incentive to stand him they might have stand him beforehand because of his carefully manufactured heavily marketed frame he's a brand right he's like oh real life tony stark but the other reason that it, his like standum is on fucking crack is because they own stock prices at tesla so they're now financially tied to his success the average amount of money the first the person makes in their first month is only 300 dollars. doesn't matter it costs you 50 dollars to join after three months 150 dollars commitment the average amount of money created by each individual is over 1800 dollars so according to his averages working at mcdonald's is a seven or eight times faster money making method than his course <laughs> if you try to do any research on what the course entails it's all videos of other people who are saying positive things about yes. the course so that this you is the worst part about it is that it, even if you wanted to like look into what the fuck the hustlers university was you literally can only arrive at videos that promote it because they are financially incentivized to have you join hustlers university from their affiliate links so we don't really know how valuable the information is inside the course he was arrested on april 11th 2022 the romanian police responded to an alleged kidnapping that two women were being held against their will in andrew tate's house and being forced into sex one of those women was american the police were alerted by officials of the u.s bouncing on my boy's affiliate link yep embassy in romania the brothers were arrested the house was searched but nothing really happened and they were released. The report says that there is an ongoing investigation looking into a potential human trafficking case with these men. The Tate brothers said that the American girl's boyfriend got jealous that she was at their mansion and he called the cops lying saying that she was held against her will. I get about 50 to 100 DMs on Instagram a day from women. Yeah, please kidnap me. Hot women. <laughs> please. Will you kidnap me? Smiley face. Yeah. 
Tate fans say, well, if they were actually doing those crimes, then they would be in jail, whereas other people point out that a human trafficking investigation could take many, many years to conduct. Some people think he's guilty because of his suspicious ways of recruiting women to work for his cam business. On top of Tate's- <laughs> Love bombing. Bro, it's not- Please don't devalue grooming by just using the term love bombing. Oh my god. Bro, this man has already openly admitted that he pays the police off or could pay the police off, that he's working with the fucking Romanian mafia. Like, they, I mean, it's pretty- It's- I don't know. Maybe- maybe I'm crazy, but I do see what's going on here. Convenient reasons why he wants to live in Romania. So Romania is absolutely corrupt. It's a corruption that everyone can participate. To say no, motherfucker, this. But I like the idea of being able to just say to, to do what I want. Laws don't really apply to you. If they made a law in the UK I was unhappy with, I'd just leave. And if they made a law in Romania where I live, I'm unhappy with, I would just leave. One thing that Andrew Tate is not is dumb. He knows how to sell the dream. He knows how to say things that people want to share. And Most importantly, he knows how to present himself. A lot of like the idiotic shit that he says is unironically tailored for the idiotic people that he wants to scam. There's a lot of stupid people out there, guys. There are a lot of stupid people out there. Smart people are not buying into a fucking multi-level marketing scheme. Do you understand? They're buying into, dumb people are buying into a multi-level marketing scheme, which is why he can get away with being like, yeah, empirical evidence is stupid. Imperial evidence is stupid. Like that motherfucker, he knows he knows better that's why you're constantly second guessing yourself if you're like a relatively intelligent person when you watch someone like andrew tate you're like what the fuck is this dude real is this dude for real he's joking right he must be joking and there are moments of like self-awareness where you do recognize that he's joking because he is purposely crafting an image of himself that is so fucking ridiculous but that works and that is deliberate the whole idea of like uh constantly fucking talking about how he has all of these uh all these cars and all these like fucking women throw themselves at him all this shit like actually confident people don't have to do that he has insecurities that much is true he's but he's also doing all of that because he is basically a beacon for every fucking dumbass he's put up a sign that says dumbass is welcome okay he's like the american police force he's like the nypd if your iq level is over a certain point need not apply Okay, no, that's too high. We don't want you in here. We can deny you uh, the, the right to a fucking job. You have tested too high on the fucking IQ test. You can't be a cop. Same shit with, with Andrew Tate. He's like, he wants dumb people. I feel like just calm people stupid is oversimplifying. They're deluded because of the pressures of capitalism. No, there is stupidity there too. There's plenty of fucking, I mean, you don't have to be, the grift that he has created isn't not, it, it is preying on uh, vulnerable people, certainly, but it's it's certainly preying on, you know, it, it's, it's, it's tailor-made for silly people okay a lot of truth in his statements he's had constant viral videos talking about how governments manipulate and control people how they put lies into citizens heads and create false realities the matrix the most valuable thing on the planet today is human capital even the people at the very very top echelons of life all they care about is is controlling people the only way to escape the Matrix is to follow him. Which is pretty funny because, like, that's what he's doing. Like, oh, yeah, the only thing that rich people care about is controlling people. It's like, motherfucker, you're doing that, though. Like, and do what he says. He studied exactly what he claims the Western world does. He understands it and then implements those exact strategies he claims to loathe directly back to the people that love and support him. So now they are controlled by his Matrix. But yep. remember, Andrew Tate is never satisfied. It was good, but you know, like, I don't ever feel like I'm satisfied. Food means nothing when you're rich. It's too cheap. Any man who sits and says that sex is great or sex is fun, just clearly hasn't had enough sex. Because sex is boring. Sex is a chore. He's so... Oh, dude, ace visibility. My man didn't realize that, dude. My man's got the ace flag right behind him. The sad thing about people who invest in Hustlers University and post his clips are that people literally pay bosses the same thing they're paying to do. Yeah. He said it over and over again. He wants to conquer. We are obsessed with power. I get more and more powerful. You don't want money, you want power. The only thing left for you to decide is if he's really trying to better the lives of others and allow them to escape the matrix. Is he using the same exact brainwashing tactics the elite use on his own followers and living life like a reckless mafia boss? Or is this all just one long scheme for him to make another dollar and cure his boredom? Because I'm not built to live a normal existence. I can't do it. I couldn't just have a kid with some girl and sit at home and work a little bit and relax. I've, I've never relaxed my entire life. I don't know what relaxing is. It's just not <laughs> Dude, the funny thing is like a, a chatter also pointed this out, but like he's such a misogynist that he doesn't even enjoy having sex with women. <laughs> like in a weird way, he's like, yeah, sex isn't even fun. You know, after all, you have to bend the company and time with a woman and women are fucking awful.
<laughs> Classic guy raised by weird obsessive genius, father energy, pure mommy and daddy issues. Yeah. Well, there are plenty of people that were raised with like shit parents who didn't fucking turn out to be like incredibly suspicious in the way that they do sex work, move to Romania to be able to do that, uh, openly do that by like openly being fucking corrupt. And, and on top of that, like may or may not be working with a Romanian mafia on a, you know, money laundering scheme.